Hello everybody, welcome to Therapy Dog Talk. My name is Sherry, my pup's name is Sunny, and each week we talk with different therapy dog teams around the world to learn about the impact they're making in their spaces. If you're just getting started, we have a free guide for you that you can find at freeguide.therapydogtalk.com and we'd love to have you join us over in our free community at community.therapydogtalk.com. Hi! Hi, <laughs> I was lost. <laughs> that's okay. You're not the first one that's gotten lost on their way here. I'm here now. That's so is he. Oh, Petey. <laughs> he's kind of here. He's actually on the couch, but I'm not picking him up. That's okay. If he's comfortable, you should let him be comfortable. He is very happy. Well, I know he has a very big job as a tripod therapy dog and ambassador for special needs pets and helping you out. But I would love it if you could introduce us to yourself and to Petey for those of us who don't know you. I have been a therapy dog handler since about 2012 with my former dog, Jake. He was golden retriever. He passed away in 2017. Okay. And three months later, on Facebook, I kept seeing the images of this four-month-old puppy that was crushed underneath the wheel of car, left on the side of the road to die. I already had one pit bull, so I knew how wonderful they were. But people kept tagging me because I am a, well, at that time I worked with a different therapy group, but I've worked with multiple therapy dog groups. I'm a mentor evaluator. I had gone to vet school. I was a registered veterinary technician. Basically, you could say my entire life is revolved around dogs. I was also, and still, am a canine good citizen evaluator for the AKC. So I kept getting tagged in these posts. Come see this dog. Come test this dog. Come look at this dog. And I was mad at God, the universe, or whatever else existed because my dog had died very suddenly. So I didn't want to deal with him. I sent some money to the GoFundMe. I was like, okay, that's nice. That poor dog. But then he just kept popping up on my feed and people kept posting me about this dog. So I took my 14 year old, who was 14 at the time, threw her in a car. We drove about two hours to test him for temperament disposition since the woman that had saved him off the side of the road named Barb, she thought, you know, he was so sweet tempered that he would make a great therapy dog, right? And I'm thinking, yeah, everybody thinks their dog's going to make a therapy dog. Everybody thinks I have a good dog. It likes people. It'll make a therapy dog, which is so not the case. But it took five minutes of this guy and his charm and his sweetness and his love and his willingness. And I just melted. And needless to say, dude came home with me that day. Aw, that's such a precious story. <laughs> He's pretty special. You know, the thing about this dog that I didn't get from my former dog, I mean, all therapy dogs are wonderful. There are no bad therapy dogs. Everybody's therapy dog is therapy for them and hopefully for many, many hundreds of thousands of other people. Yeah. But this dog's backstory is, I mean, he's so unique in the world of dogs, much less therapy dogs. A, yeah. the only three-legged pit bull therapy dog that I know of. He is the sweetest dog I've ever tested. He is the best tempered dog I've ever tested. Now, is he the best trained dog? No. His sit and stay commands is pretty pathetic. But I don't care because as a therapy dog handler, my job is to find the dog that has the best appropriate disposition and temperament to do the work. And right. the dog has to love the work. There is yeah. no dog on the planet that loves its job more than Petey loves his job. I saw that during the pandemic. I saw that when he couldn't work, when I couldn't work. Yeah. And man, it was hard on both of us. So getting back to work, he had knee surgery almost a year ago next month. That was rough, but he's come back and flourished and the guy is living his best life. Aw, I love that. What do you see in him that lets you know how much he just loves this work? Eternal smile, wagging tail. This guy can work a room. <laughs> he will literally walk in a room. And unlike having a golden retriever, everybody loves golden retrievers. Everybody trusts golden retrievers. There are many counties, cities, and states in this nation that do not even allow you to own a pit bull. They will confiscate them if they find them. They will euthanize them if they see them for no other purpose other than the fact that they were born in a skin suit that some people who are ignorant and phobic don't understand. Now, any dog can bite, any dog can be a bad dog, even, well, I don't even know if he could, but if a dog could, he, I mean, maybe he could, it would be really rare, but I've never seen him show one ounce of aggression. Even with his kitten, he has a cat that he has raised. He has a turtle that is his turtle. I mean, he's the only pet I know that has pets. So, you know, he's such a great ambassador for pit bull type dogs. He's such a great ambassador for special needs pets, whether they be dogs, horses, cows, pigs, it doesn't matter. Just because you're different, look different, walk different, it doesn't mean that you don't have a purpose and it doesn't mean that you can't do your job. 
he's kindness on three legs. He's just precious. Kindness on three legs. I love that. I kind of like him a little bit. See, I have this tattoo with his face on it, which will be there Aww. forever. So no matter what happens, Petey will be with me every day for the rest of my life. Yeah, he definitely has a special place in your heart. Yeah, mine and a couple thousand other people's. Yeah, there's a few comments in the chat of people who are big fans of you and Petey. Mama Tater says she loves his visit at OU with his smile. He loves his friends at OU and Mercy Rehab and Canadian Valley Integris and Baptist Integris and all the other places that we go. He, he, he's, never, he's never met a person that ended up not liking him. Yeah. Even people who are terrified of dogs, scared or, you know, just ignorant about these type breeds, you know, because it's not necessarily everyone's fault. If you don't educate yourself and you don't find out and you listen to media hype about how vicious pit bull attack story at five, you don't ever hear vicious golden retriever attack story at five, right. vicious Labrador attack story at five, <laughs> vicious schnauzer attack. But for some reason, when it's something horrific, it's always a dog that's never been socially trained, it's never been loved and it's been neglected or abused. And that is never the fault of the dog, no matter what. It's always the fact of the people who have the dog. Yeah. So people blame the wrong end of the leash. It's our fault if something bad happens. But it's his reward if something good happens, because I don't take credit. It's on him. I love that. Well, Dina, it sounds like you've had a lot of experience in even helping other dogs get their CGC or become therapy dogs. How did you originally find out about the role of therapy dogs and get involved down this path? Well, unfortunately, I have had a fairly extensive history with orthopedic surgeries. Prior to my 2020 cancer diagnosis, I had had almost 20 various surgeries. I was in a very horrific car accident when I was about 32 mm -hmm. weeks pregnant with my daughter who is now 19 and perfectly fine. Mama took the brunt, which is fine. That's how it should be. And she came out unscathed and I came out really messed up. So I spent a lot of time in hospitals, physical therapy, rehabilitation centers, and I never saw a dog. And I'm a dog person. I am an animal freak. I mean, I like them a whole lot more than people. So to be weeks and months in a facility where you can't get your hands on a furry little thing that gives you comfort, it was rough. And I decided I needed to do something about that. So this is kind of my way of trying to give back to all the people who gave to me when I needed it. That's really beautiful. Kim or Bubbles, the therapy dog, is asking which therapy dog organization you certify for. Alliance of Therapy Dogs is okay. who I work with currently. All right. Awesome. Bubbles is Petey's girlfriend, you know. Oh, I don't know if I you know this. Know. <laughs> they have a long online history and romance. They are boyfriend and girlfriend. They had both won a contest where they represented rescue dogs. Her backstory is horrific as well. And she is such an amazing advocate for the same things that I am trying to advocate for. Although her following is about 17 times bigger than ours. <laughs> and well deserved. I mean, you know, they do the work. I'm not here to compete. I love her. I think that the work that this woman has done to advocate for domestic abuse victims, you know, her dog was horrifically shot at gunpoint mm -hmm. at point blank range and survived broken jaw, you know, lost an eye, lost her hearing. And I consider her one of my very, very dearest Instagram friends. And of course, Bubble's girlfriend or <laughs> Petey's girlfriend. They can't have grand puppies because they're fixed, but... <laughs> Oh, that's great. I think that might actually be a different Bubbles because I've met the Bubbles in the comments and I don't think. That oh, that's okay. Well, I can't see the comments. But, but I would love to meet Petey's girlfriend, Bubbles. As oh, well. yeah. KH Bubbles is his girlfriend on Instagram. I don't know which Bubbles you're referring to, but hi, other Bubbles. <laughs> this Bubbles is also an Alliance of Therapy Dogs therapy dog. So, yeah. I was on the board of directors with a local Oklahoma based organization, you know, 10, 12 years ago. But I wanted to step out and be able to be with an organization where I could take him, you know, if I want to go to Colorado for the summer, I can take him and we can visit there. So I did some research and found this organization and they do not have any issues with any particular type species. Well, breed rather, dogs only, but they don't have a problem with him because of how he looks. And there are organizations that are not as willing to accept a dog with a special needs and be one that looks like him. You know, so that's where I went with Alliance. I think they're a wonderful organization, but I am also affiliated with the AKC, American Kennel Club. He okay. is not full-blooded. He is a rescue, but he has had a DNA test and he's mostly Pitbull or Staffordshire Bull Terrier technically, but there's a hint of Labrador in there. Oh, Just enough Labrador that he sheds every minute of every day, 365 <laughs> days a year. And I refer to that as Pitbull glitter. So that's <laughs> Petey's Pitbull glitter and it is everywhere probably <laughs> all over me as we speak. 
I love that. That's he leaves a white trail of fur everywhere we go. <laughs> Especially with the hospitals where they have black and dark blue scrubs. Those people are so wonderful. They don't care. They get in the floor and, you know, they're just covered. And I'm sure their animals hate them when they get home. Or they're just very curious. Who are you loving at work when I was stuck here at home? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mom, you've cheated on me with another dog. I can smell it. But anyway, uh, shout out to his girlfriend, Bubbles. Yeah, I'll have to go find her. She it's sounds pretty awesome. awesome. Yeah, KH Bubbles. It's at KH Bubbles. Okay, very cool. Well, Archer, the therapy dog, is curious what you look for when evaluating temperament. Hi, Archer. I'm actually a certified temperament evaluator, which is a little bit different than just being a therapy dog handler. Temperament is the dog's willingness to do the job. So I could be a big person full of ego and say, I want to have a therapy dog because I want to make the world better, which is not necessarily a negative thing. But there are people who are out just to promote themselves. So I'm going to take my dog who clearly is shy or phobic or anxious, and I'm going to force him to do this because by golly, it's what I want to do because I want to look good or I want to help people. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for dogs who genuinely are gregariously happy, friendly, personable, they love other dogs and other people. They can't be scared of noises or thunder, lightning, riding in cars, being in large groups. These are dogs that if five small children sat in the floor and crawled on your dog, the dog would be like, this is heaven. That's what makes a good therapy dog. Are there dogs that are not like that? Absolutely. And they can probably get away with doing different types of venues because not everybody needs to be a hospital therapy dog. Not every therapy dog needs to work with children. Some dogs are streamlined for college classrooms. And maybe those dogs don't like small children, and that's okay, as long as they are still friendly and they love the people that they work with. So just because he's well diversified doesn't mean that other dogs aren't doing a good job. But what we look for is just friendliness no fear, no anxiety, and willingness to participate. Yeah. Kind of on top of that, Cheyenne from Hound Dog Fitness was asking, what would you say is the most common reason you see that people don't pass the first time? It's typically the handler that fails the test. With Alliance of Therapy Dogs, every organization's probably got their own little set of rules that are a little different. We basically have a handling test, which is very much like the canine good citizen test. It's basically 10 test items, very, very similar with the exception of, you know, sit and stay for three minutes and all that. But it's the people, you know, people get anxious. Sometimes they, you know, they walk with a loose leash. If you think about it, we have a, a four foot rule with Alliance of Therapy Dogs. Honestly, I would prefer a two foot rule. I'm not chastising Alliance of Therapy Dogs. But if you have a two foot leash, I'm six foot tall. I have a four foot, just about arm span. So right now with a two foot leash, that six feet, my dog can be away from me at any moment. If I have a four foot leash with my four foot long arm, that dog can be eight feet away from me. Can I properly control that dog eight feet from me? Absolutely not. You know, another dog can come around a corner, another therapy dog or service dog. And service dogs don't necessarily have to be friendly. They typically are non-responsive, but they don't have to be all happy at all. Typically, they're not doing that. But if that dog is four to six feet away from me, I can't control him properly. I can get tripped up. People can get injured, things can get knocked over, especially in a medical situation or working with small children. So handlers being too lax because they think, well, you know, at home, I let him do this, or it's okay to put his paws up on the bed at the house, or I let him jump up on the counter. Well, that's clearly not appropriate in certain facilities and hospitals and things, because, you know, you might be working with somebody who's got chemo poles or IVs or sutures or broken body parts or someone who's had a stroke and they can't use this side of their body. And here you got, you know, a dog jumping up on them. So it's handler mistakes that typically fail because at the end of the day, it's our fault regardless. It's our fault if that dog's not properly trained. It's our fault if the dog is doing the work and he doesn't want to be. So it's up to us. So it's handler mistakes. Yeah, for sure. Jared from Breathe a Therapy Dog was asking, when you look at that temperament evaluation, what age is good to make that assessment and can they be trained to become more social? Well, most places have a year. You know, you have to be with your dog for a year simply for bonding. Now, that doesn't mean that, I mean, that dog could be a year and two days old and you could still apply them for the test at that point if you've been with them for a year. But it takes basically a year to assess an actual temperament. And typically it takes a full year for a dog to be able to settle down enough to do it. So there are no puppy therapy dogs. There are people who take their dogs into nursing homes and say, my dog's a therapy dog, but those are not certified actual licensed therapy dogs. Those are comfort dogs that maybe a facility is allowed into a building to give comfort to people. 
but those puppies can scratch people and they can bite and they can poop and they, you know. So having your dog with you for a year gives you an idea of what that dog is actually like. It gives you a really good basic fundamental understanding as to the dog's adjustment to noises, sounds, stimuli. But if you want to be a therapy dog handler, it's up to you. You don't have to take therapy dog training classes. So I'm sorry, all you boarding schools and therapy dog schools, I'm going to take some of your money here because you can do this on your own without spending hundreds of dollars. And quite honestly, they're just assessing temperament and disposition and charging you several hundred dollars. When if you expose your animals to the right kinds of stimuli, durable medical equipment, or let's say you're working in a school, you make sure that you've taken them to playgrounds and you've gotten that animal socialized with those types of noises and sounds and things, then you're already doing the work because you're watching and assessing. And this is Max, by the way. Max, say hi. You're already doing the work to uh, check your dog's temperament and disposition. Hello, Max, by the way. Animals are always welcome on Therapy Dog Talk. <laughs> well, he'll probably be back up here. He is not Petey's cat. Uh, Logan is Petey's cat. and He was here a minute ago, but he'll pop back up, I'm sure. I love that Petey has his own pet, so it's fantastic. Yeah, it's a long story, but that's his cat. That's great. Dina, what surprised you the most in your training journey when you were first getting started as a therapy dog team? Surprised me the most? How few <laughs> dogs were actually out there doing the work. I mean, I'm in Oklahoma City metro area, and we're like 13th or 14th largest metro city in the country. I am the only evaluator mentor for our group in the entire thousands and thousands of people. So, you know, there's not that many of us. And I know in certain cities and stuff, it might be different, but it's only been in the last, I'd say, 10 years that therapy dogs have actually been recognized as being valuable holistic practitioners and stuff have recognized how much good therapy dogs can do for decades. But it's just now some of the hospitals, you know, Integris hospitals, Mercy hospitals are recognizing that there are things like Reiki and energy work and how these animals can absorb negativity and make us feel better. They can reduce our blood pressure. They can um, increase good hormone levels and take away negative things, cortisol and things like that. I watched him reduce a man's blood pressure almost 35 points just by this man physically holding him and petting him for just a few minutes. Just like this dude right here is doing, which is my personal therapy cat. Max, say hello again. They can sense anxiety. All animals can sense it. Not every one of them is as in tune as some therapy dogs. But I mean, there are therapy cats that are just as amazing too. They're just a lot of people are allergic, so they don't get the attention that they need. But I know some therapy dog horses. I know some miniature therapy dog donkeys. I mean, animals are just very valuable as far as what they give to us. They don't ask for much and they give everything they've got. Animals are the kind of people that we should be. I love that. Animals are the kind of people that we should be. That's a great one. I want to grow up to be like Petey. There's that saying that goes around that's like, be the person your dog thinks you are. <laughs> very true. Yeah. Or, or, or uh, your cat. Yeah. I'm not sure my cat believes in me as much as my dog does, but... Well, you know, I've got two cats. One of them is just, he's all about me and very loving. And the other one is like, he's Petey's cat. He's just like, yeah, I'm a cat, whatever. So yeah. it's all about temperament and disposition. If I was going to have a therapy cat, it'd be this dude, not the other one. You know, I have two dogs. My other dog is a pit bull and there's no way she could do this work. You know, she's a severely formerly abused rescue who... Her backstory is pretty horrible, but there's no way she could do this kind of work, even if I wanted her to. She just can't. It's just not who she is. So she is basically my little protector. That's her job. Every animal has a purpose. Yeah. And it's just like people, we all have a reason why we're here. And finding out what that reason is and then fulfilling that purpose is, I think, why we're all supposed to be on this little rock spinning around the sun. I love it. Dina, you and Petey recently received an award, I believe, for your number of visits. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that? Well, it's more of a like a title or a, with the AKC, they have things called titles. And if you have a certain amount of visits, then you are awarded a certain status. There's the basic therapy dog. There's therapy dog novice, therapy dog advanced, therapy dog excellent, and then therapy dog distinguished, which is the highest title. So he has achieved therapy dog excellence for doing over 200 documented visits or somewhere around 300. But had it not been for COVID and my cancer issue, we would have already hit distinguished by now. But in a year and a half, I was not doing much except laying on the couch trying to recover. So we'll get there. Recovery and taking care of yourself is definitely important as well. He does a good job doing that for me. Yeah. He takes care of me. I take care of him. 
Are there any stories that stand out to you over those 200 visits that are just, you know, a good example of why you do what you do? Hundreds. You know, I probably should write a book or a few books. I would read it. Or a series of books. Probably one of the most poignant was a little boy who obviously had both reasons and stuff. I can't give names or anything like that. But this young man was a victim of a horrific domestic assault. He was about six years old. He had gasoline poured on him and he was lit on fire. He survived that, was hospitalized, had had multiple, multiple, multiple surgeries. This is a child who his mobility was severely impaired because of his burns. He couldn't extend his limbs and things the way normal kids can. And part of his recovery was all the surgeries to go back in and work with the burn victims and, you know, working on surgery after surgery after surgery. And the little guy was kind of having failure to thrive. He just was not engaging. He didn't want to get out of bed. They needed him to walk the halls, to work the joints where the skin needs to stretch with burn victims. And he just refused. And he saw Pete and eyes lit up. His entire countenance changed. And I asked him, I said, do you want to help Petey walk up and down the hall? Because he has a harness. And of course, I have a leash attached to his collar, but he wears a therapy dog vest, which happens to have a handle on it. And um, I said to the little man, I'm like, you know, if you hold on to his vest handle, you can walk him for me. Of course, I'm holding on to it, but he thinks he's doing this for me. So for those few moments, it took him away from his pain. It gave him something else to focus on. It gave him a reason to keep fighting. And it changed his entire rehabilitation journey. Because from that moment forward, he was able to begin looking forward to our visits. So that was probably, as a former teacher and a mom, that was a big deal. Yeah, that's really special. In those visits, Roxy had a question is, have you ever observed any signs of animal burnout with PD or really what do you look for as a handler to make sure that he has the self-care and you have the self-care that you need as well? Very good question. You know, it's all about the bond that you have with your pet. I am closer to this dog than I've probably ever been to any animal in my life. I literally can understand what he's thinking. And I know he can mind me too. The things to look for, of course, is just fatigue. You know, is the dog not engaging anymore? People are walking toward him. Is he turning his head? Is he just sitting down? Is he not, you know, happy and smiling? Is his tail not wagging? You might have a dog who was in a really great mood, but after an hour or two, they're done. It's a lot of stimulus. You know, we do mostly hospital work and physical rehabilitation type work. And people are there, people who are in pain. And people who are in pain emit a certain type of energy. Sorry, former high school science teacher. Before vet school, I was actually a biology, anatomy, physiology coach and teacher. And energy is all about what we give off. It's who we are. It's the essence. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So when you're in pain, you give off a certain amount of energy. What do animals do? They empathically absorb energy. They give their good energy, but sometimes they get super saturated with too much pain, too much stuff. And we have to be cognizant of their behavior. The things to look for, tucked tail, lack of participation, not wanting to engage, looking down, pulling against the leash. That's a dog that needs to go home. They need to rest. Of course, if they're whining, if they're in pain, you've always got to pay attention. Does your dog need to go potty? Have you walked your dog and exercised them prior to a visit? Have you walked them enough? You know, if it's a really young dog, did you wear them out so they're not like crazy spastic? Or have you worked them too hard and now they're exhausted and they just want to go lay on the couch? He has very, very extensive physical injuries, not just losing a leg. He had broken ribs. He had trauma to his spinal cord. His tail was broken in multiple places. He was scheduled to be euthanized. And uh, he is now paying for some of those things at age five that were not problematic when he was puppy. But arthritis, the fact that now he needs a full hip replacement and his hock or ankle is to the point where it is not fixable. I mean, last year we spent over $12,000 of money that people generously donated, taking him to a couple of different states, getting him verified and certified to make sure he was not in pain. This guy has acupuncture, chiropractic, laser therapy. He's done water treadmill recovery. He had a $12,000 surgery in and of itself just to replace the collateral ligament, which is kind of like an ulnar. Well, it's like an anterior cruciate ligament in a human. So they cut his bone in half, moved his leg forward, put pins and screws. So because of all of those reasons, he is spending a great deal of time in a stroller at this point in his career. And you know what? That's okay. He's certified to be in a stroller. He can still do his job, but I refuse to put him in one second of pain because then I'm doing it for ego. And that's not what this is about. 
It's about me advocating for my dog because I sit back and I watch the beauty of what this animal brings to people. I mean, I don't get paid for this. None of us do. We pay a lot of money for training and food and treats and costumes. And, you know, it's expensive, you know, gasoline. But what I get paid in is the reward of doing the work because it's beautiful. Not only do I get to work with him, but I get to help mentor and train all these other upcoming therapy dog handlers in this state. So I'm really genuinely blessed to do what I do. It's a gift. I love that. Jared was curious if Petey is named after the Little Rascals dog. Two things about Petey. I'm in Oklahoma. I went to Oklahoma State University. That's where I went to vet school. Our mascot is Pistol Pete. But when I first saw him, the lady who had rescued him, she was calling him Chance, which was a cute name, but he wasn't a Chance because she was like, well, second Chance. And I'm like, that's cool, but that's not him. And he reminded me of Petey from Little Rascals. So yes, in part, his name is because of Petey from Little Rascals, because that was a fawn colored pit bull back in the 70s when nobody looked at them as mean, ferocious, horrible beasts. And I wanted to remind people of that softer, gentler time when people were not so down on this breed. I am passionate about protecting these animals. They can't help that they were born looking a certain way any more than you can help having your color of eyes or, you know, your color of skin. To not like an animal simply for how it looks is a human thing. Dogs don't judge each other how they look. People shouldn't either. Oh, yeah. here comes his cat. Lady, <laughs> say hi. Say hi. Hi. This is Petey's son. Aww. I love how all the animals are just taking their turn making appearances today. <laughs> well, Petey's not the only amputee. Max here, who is walking away from me right now, is also an amputee. He's missing a tail. Yeah, he I was stabbed that. twice in the chest and had his tail cut off and thrown in a trash dumpster as a kitten. So, yeah, all five of these animals are rescues. So I think that's important. Yeah, both of mine are rescues too. So thank you for the work that you do with rescues. Well, I don't judge people that have full blood animals because you got to have those too. But I'm passionate about advocating for those special needs guys and rescues and specifically pit bulls. Everybody's down on them more so than any other breed, except maybe chihuahuas. They get a bad rap. Not they, always deserve. They do. Commonly because little dogs are often not really trained. Because they're babies and we want to carry right. them around. And... Right. And we think it's cute when they do naughty things because they're not giant. <laughs> right. My daughter has a uh, a baby miniature schnauzer. Well, he's one year old. His name is Jack, Captain Jack Sparrow. And he is her emotional support animal, also a rescue. He belonged to my ex, who uh, is now very, very ill and unable to care for Jack. So it's interesting having the perspective of two big dogs and then the little dog, because you know who the boss is, little man. That little dude, he's at school with my daughter right now, but he was here for the weekend and he is the boss of Graham's house when that puppy is here. He just tells Petey what to do and Petey's like, yes, sir, I'll do it. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, Dina, I don't want to keep you captive forever. I feel like we could talk all day, but is there anything else that you wanted to share while you're here? I don't know if there's any other questions or I'm a talker, kind of what I've done in every profession I've ever had. And at my age, I've had a couple of different gigs, but I always talk. So probably talk too much. So I don't really have anything else I want to say other than don't judge a book by its cover. Expose your children to people who are different, animals that are different. Recognize that you don't have to be pretty to have a fulfilling life and to give back. My dog is probably loved more because of his disability than if he was just a regular four-legged dog because people see the courageous strength that he doesn't feel sorry for himself. I don't feel sorry for myself. I'm blessed. I'm alive. I was given four months to live two and a half years ago. I'm here and I'm not going anywhere. So just love people for who they are, where they're at. Do the same that your animals would do. Your dog doesn't judge you how you look, what kind of job you have, or how much money you make, or whether you have bad breath. They're going to love you anyway. You like your dog. I love that. All right. Well, thank you so much. And if people want to follow your journey, they can find you at Tripod PD, correct? Yeah, we've got TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. My kids set all that up for me. So I used to be on a lot more than I have been the last few months. But follow us, follow his journey. We try to give back and do what we can to make this world just a little bit better. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate you and PD. Thank you so much, Dina. Thanks for the opportunity. Take care. Have a good day. Bye, guys. Bye.